Everyone feels regret, but some people feel it more than others. Imagine making a product you think is boring and selling it for a quick buck, only to have it change the business world and make the lucky person who bought it millions of dollars. We will probably never know how many regrets these people have. However, before we start our video, we would appreciate it if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel and also press the bell icon. Let's get started. 10 The Raven Edgar Allan Poe 2 Retouched and Transparent BG in The Raven By Edgar Allan Poe, a man is visited by the bird of the same name, which represents his grief over a lost loved one. After his friend's magazine turned down the poem, Poe sold it to the American Review, which put it in its February 1845 issue. He got $9 for it, and the poem became famous and well-liked right away. It was reprinted in magazines all over the country and helped make Poe famous. Today, The Raven is known as one of the most famous poems ever written. It has made Poe a lot of money through reprints, books, and even movies, but he was poor all his life and almost broke when he died. It is estimated that he made only $6,200 from writing professionally over the course of his life, but in 2009, one copy of his first book of poems sold for $662,500. 9 Security Pins Walter Hunt was a mechanic and inventor who lived in New York City. He had patents for a fountain pen, knife sharpener, rifle, streetcar bell, stove, ice plow, sewing machine, street sweeping machine, and nail making machine, among many others. To pay off a $15 debt to a friend, Hunt decided to invent something useful that would make him money quickly. One day, it came to him while he was playing with a 20 centimeter piece of brass wire. He came up with the idea for the safety pin, which was the first pin with a spring and a clasp to protect the fingers. Hunt filed the patent on April 10, 1849. He later sold it to W.R. Grace and Company for $400. With that, he paid his friend back and kept the rest of the money, which was $385. W.R. Grace and Company made a lot of money off of the safety pin, as would have Hunt if he had kept some of the rights. 8 Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band The Beatles' eighth studio album, Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, had a cover made by the well-known British pop artist Peter Blake and his wife Jan Howard. The cover is mostly a fake band photo with many famous people from history standing with the Beatles. Marilyn Monroe, Bob Dylan, Lenny Bruce, Albert Einstein, Marlon Brando, H.G. Wells, and, by chance, Edgar Allan Poe are some of these people. Blake and Howarth were each paid £100, about $280, US dollars, for their work, but they didn't get any royalties. The album and its cover became famous. It is one of the best-selling albums of all time, having sold about 32 million copies around the world. 7 Jello In 1895, Pearl and May Wade of Leroy, New York, who made cough syrup but were having trouble selling it, came up with a way to mix powdered gelatin with fruit-based syrups to make a tasty and marketable product. The product was tasty, with 88% sugar, and they named it Jell-O, a portmanteau of jelly in the era's trend of ending a product name with O. They bought the patent for powdered gelatin from Peter Cooper, who invented the first American steam locomotive, and went into business. The weights were syrup experts but not marketers, so after years of trying to sell Jell-O but failing, they sold the full rights to their neighbor. Under the guidance of a successful businessman like Woodward and with the help of a clever advertising campaign, Gel Annual O's sales rose quickly to $250,000 and then to $1,000,000 in 1906. In 2013, sales of Jell-O were almost $500 million. 6. The James Bond Theme Song Monty Norman wrote the James Bond theme song for the first Bond movie, Dr. No, in 1962. The producers weren't happy with how the song sounded, so they hired composer John Barry to change it. Barry, who was a successful recording artist with a unique instrumental band, added rock and jazz elements to make it more upbeat. The result was a sharper, catchier, and more exciting song, which became the famous tune we all know today. Barry was paid a one-time fee of 250 pounds, approximately 700 US dollars, for his work, while Monty Norman, who got the writing credit, has made well over 1 million dollars in royalties. Since then, there have been many court cases about golden credit, and every time Norman has won. Even though Barry's version is much better known, he hasn't made a dime from it since he was paid that small amount 42 years ago. 5. Coca-Cola In 1886, a pharmacist named John Pemberton came up with the first recipe for Coca-Cola. In May, the drink started selling at a soda fountain in an Atlanta pharmacy. At the time, it was advertised as a brain and nerve tonic. 
It cost 5 cents per glass and made only $50 in its first year on the market. Desperate for money, in part because of a crippling illness and morphine addiction, Pemberton sold his share of the drink to other investors for $1,484, most of which was an interest-free loan to be paid back with future profits. The investors then sold their shares to Asa Candler, a smart businessman. For $2,300, Candler bought Coca-Cola and the new company named after it. Pemberton died of stomach cancer in 1888, just a few months after selling his shares. In the end, Candler sold his shares in 1919 for $25 million, which is equivalent to $341 million today. For the Red Vineyard Red Vineyard's Van Gogh made the oil painting the Red Vineyard in November 1888. It shows a group of harvesters hard at work in the bright sunlight. This painting is special because it is the only thing Van Gogh ever sold while he was still alive. Anna Bach, another painter, bought it at an art show in Belgium in 1890. She bought it for 400 francs, which is about $1,600 in today's money. Like Poe, Van Gogh lived and died in sad ways. He didn't get the respect he deserved until many years after he died, but that respect made those who owned his work millions of dollars. Many of his paintings sell for more than $50 million, making him one of the most expensive artists in history. Portrait of Dr. Gachet, his most expensive painting, sold for a record-breaking $82.5 million in 1990, or $150 million in today's money. 3. Terminator James Cameron was a struggling filmmaker in the early 1980s. He had no money and no place to live, so he had to sleep in his car and on friends' couches. He had only made one movie, a low-budget horror flick called Piranha 2, the spawning that didn't do well at the box office and didn't make him any money. During this time, he had written a good screenplay called The Terminator, which he was shopping around in Hollywood. Producers were willing to buy the script, but they wouldn't let Cameron, who had never directed a movie before, direct it. She agreed to let him direct as long as he sold her all the rights for only $1, which he reluctantly did. 2. Venom, Spider-Man Randy Schuler, a Spider-Man fan from Illinois, tried to make a story arc for a contest that Marvel Comics was holding in 1982. Schuler made a new costume for Spider-Man to go with the story. The emblem on the chest was the only thing that wasn't black. This was a big change from the red and blue costume that had been worn for 20 years. He sent the idea to Marvel and waited, hoping for a response. A few months later, he got a letter from Marvel's editor-in-chief, Jim Shooter, who liked the idea and wanted to buy it for $220. Schuler was happy with the deal. His story was never published, but the costume was. It was in a May 1984 issue as an alien symbiote that bonded to its host in the form of the black suit. Fans loved it right away, and Spider-Man was forced to wear the alien costume for the next four years. Eventually, the symbiote found a new host, a journalist named Eddie Brock, and turned him into Venom, a supervillain. Venom is without a doubt the most well-known comic book villain made in the last 35 years. He has been in his own comic book series and on a lot of different products. He has also been in video games, TV shows, and movies, like the 2007 hit Spider-Man 3, which made nearly $900 million around the world. 2. Call of the Wild Jack London wrote The Call of the Wild, a story about a dog who was taken from his home in suburban California and forced to pull a sled through the Yukon wilderness during the gold rush. He was heavily influenced by his time as a prospector in the Klondike. It was first published as a serial in four issues of the Saturday Evening Post in January 1903. The Saturday Evening Post paid London $750 for non-exclusive rights. Later that same year, London gave Macmillan Publishers the full rights to turn the story into a book for $2,000. At the time, it was a big sum that most writers could only dream about. The book came out on July 1, 1903, and sold 10,000 copies on its first day for $1.50. The book quickly became a classic and will always be a part of American culture. It also made London one of the most famous authors of all time. In the US, 500,000 copies had been sold by 1914, and 6 million copies had been sold by 1964. It also sold millions of copies in other countries and has been translated into 48 languages. So, that's it for today. We hope you enjoyed the video. Use the comment section below to tell us what you think about the video. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of all the latest videos.